Okay, number eight, we did that by taking out a common factor. That, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do on number 9a here because we've got, we don't have anything that's common to all those. We've got a cosine and we have a sine. So what we want to try and do is get all these to be the same uh, trig function. Uh, particularly, we'll probably make them all sines, and then that way we can factor something and get it to work this way. So I need to get rid of the cosine and make it into a sine because I already have a sine right here. Uh, so I want to look for an identity, an identity that allows me to change the cosine squared into something with a sine. The identity that we're going to use is 1 minus sine squared x. So cosine squared is the same thing as 1 minus sine squared x. So we're just going to replace the cosine with the identity. Again, the reason why for doing that is because the rest of the stuff that we have here uh, is a sine and a 1, and so hopefully we can combine that together and be able to factor if we have all the same trig functions. So we, that's our first step is to put in the identity. Then we're going to multiply by 2. So we have 2 minus 2 sine squared x. And then we have the rest of this. And you want to combine like terms. Now here we have a 2 and we have a negative 1. So those two, 2 minus 1 is 1. So if we combine those together, the next line down, we're going to have a plus 1 on the end because we, again, we combine the 2 and the negative 1 together to get the positive 1. So now we have some signs and so we can factor, but it's recommended that if you have a negative in front of the sine squared, it's always good to multiply both sides by a negative to clear that, just reverse your signs. A lot of times, uh, if people try and factor something with the negative out front, a lot of times it's a lot easier to make a mistake at that point. We don't get the right sign. So we're going to multiply both sides by a negative. Negative 1 is technically what I'm multiplying the whole thing by. So everything inside is going to be multiplied by the negative. So all the signs are going to switch. We get 2 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so again, we multiply both sides by a negative. Negative 1, again, is what we did on that step. Okay, now next, now we, have, we got rid of the negative in front. We're ready to do factoring. Now for factoring, I usually do these by trial and error, but there's other ways, uh, certainly, for factoring this one. You could use bottoms up or grouping on this as well, but I'll do trial and error on this one since the, the factors aren't that big that we have for the numbers here. The first one, 2 sine squared x. Uh, the way that we can get a sine squared is if we multiply a 2 sine by a sine. That's really the only way we can write that. We could switch the order around, but the factors 2 and 1 will basically be the same. On the end, we have a 1, so there's only... Just 1 and 1 is all we can do there. Now all we have to do is worry about the correct signs on this. We want to get a positive 1 sign in the middle. If I multiply 2 sine by 1, that's positive 2. And then I'll need to make this a negative. So a positive 2 sine minus sine will give you just plus 1 sign there uh, in the middle. Now we have it all factored. And the last thing we're going to do is set each of these equal to 0 to get the answers. We have 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0, and sine x plus 1 equals 0. You want to solve for sine for both of these. So the top one, if I solve for sine, I'm going to get positive 1 half. And down here, if I solve for sine, I'm going to get negative 1. The last thing we do is look at the unit circle and find any angle in radians where we get a, a value of one half. Now sine is referring to a y value off the unit circle, so we, we want to find any place where there's a y value equal to a half and write those angles down. So for this first one here, we're going to get uh, our 30 degree angle. That's going to be pi over 6. And the other one is going to be in the second quadrant, and that's going to be at 150 degrees. And so if we uh, write that one down, uh, we'll get uh, 5 pi over 6 for that, 5 pi over 6 um, for that other one. So if pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, those will be your two answers for the first equation. Now we got this one, sine x equals negative 1. Now negative 1, that's going to occur at, at the very bottom of the unit circle. That's going to be at 270 degrees, or in radians, that would be 3 pi over 2. So you can double check these. 
Uh, you should have a unit circle with you as you're working through uh, these kind of problems and you can just read those values off the unit circle. So again, you're looking for wherever you have a y value of one half that occurs at these two angles on the unit circle. And then you're also finding where the y value is equal to negative one on the unit circle. And that's gonna happen at three pi over two. On your answer blank, you're gonna put all three of these, pi over six, five pi over six, and three pi over two.